Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the second episode of our webinar series on 90 days to the 99th percentile on GMAT Focus Edition. So this is Piyush Beriwala, I welcome you all for the session. This is the second episode of the GMAT Focus Study Plan uh, webinar series that we are doing. We'll be having three episodes in that. We already had uh, the first episode a couple of weeks back uh, and I'm going to give you the link for that. It's already there in the description below in case you have not watched it. Do watch it before this session because it will, it, it, especially if you are a uh, first time test taker, you're just starting your prep, do watch the episode one before you check this because obviously that's where we have talked about how to start preparing, how to create an action plan for the first stage where you do majority of your learning, okay? But if you are a retaker or you are someone who has done significant amount of prep, you can directly start with the session because here we are going to focus more importantly on the score improvement strategies. So without any further ado, let's get going into the session directly, okay? So in the last session, we talked about the GMAT action plan and basically uh, bro broke down the GMAT study plan in three stages, okay? The first stage was the learning phase where you do majority of the heavy lifting, about 150 to 200 hours of effort, go over there. Uh, that's what we covered in episode one. And we talked about how GMAT Wiz uh, and the amazing study plan feature that we have can help you master this particular stage. Now, we'll talk about the fine tuning stage, the second stage where you focus on improving upon your weak areas. That's where our focus has to be on this particular episode, episode two. And about a couple of weeks from now, we will also have our episode three, which will be solely focused on the mock strategy. So if you follow the complete advice, you will be able to get to that 715 kind of a score. So I hope all of you are excited to know more about it. And I already see some question coming in. Uh, Utsu is saying, I'm stuck in five at the score of 585 since three months please i don't know how to manage time in di even uh we don't know how much question will come in set okay i, I totally understand what's up uh don't worry obviously uh if you want my personal advice on your particular case there are different parameters that i have to look at to give you a personalized advice so if you want to connect with me and understand how our team gmat West can help you improve from this uh, score plateau that you have hit feel free to reach out to me i'm just giving my uh, call link you can just book a call on my calendar using this link and this link is by the way on the description as well guys okay so i can definitely understand from you what the problem areas you're facing and help you improve from there but be rest assured that there are a lot of great strategies that i'm going to talk about in this session i'm pretty sure that you'll get a very clear picture as to how can you go about improving your score from here okay so stay tuned with me but if you want personalized advice feel free to get in touch i'm very more than happy to discuss that okay now let's get going into the session let's get started with the session so how have i structured this session a quick one minute intro on gmat west like what is that we do then we'll go to the first and foremost thing in order to improve your score you need to understand how to dissect the questions into easy medium and hard and why is it important for you to get the hard questions right to actually score high on gmat then we will do something called a root cause analysis so this is very very important trust me guys most of the people don't understand the root cause they don't focus on identifying the root cause and they just treat the symptoms the superficial things is what they work on and if you are working at a superficial level you will never be able to exactly pinpoint and target why are you struggling and you will not be able to improve the scores either so it's very important to do the root cause analysis right and trust me guys if you do that right most of the job is done and we'll help you understanding what kind of error logs you can keep to kind of uh basically get that root cause analysis even more impactful and then we will go to the next stage obviously creating an action plan out of it so i, I don't want to keep it just open-ended by telling you okay this is this is how you create do, do, do root cause analysis and create an error log i'll also create help you create an action plan how should you go about the entire basically uh, preparation phase of the fine tuning part like where where you improve your scores uh, in the weak areas and how do you move to the next phase which is the mock phase okay so if you are liking the discussion uh, do give a uh, video a like and obviously subscribe to the gmat club youtube channel for such great updates that come okay and then obviously towards the end i'm gonna open it up for an open-ended q a but yeah as i said you can always ask the questions that you have in mind you don't have to wait till the end to ask the questions so feel free to share your thoughts and questions as you go through the session okay so quick one minute intro one minute intro about GMAT was we are world's only truly personalized GMAT course. In fact, G personalization and AI is uh, in like there in our DNA. Like when we started 
this organization of GMAT Wiz, we actually ensure that every single aspect of GMAT Wiz is all about personalization because we understand every student is unique and we were a pioneer in the entire industry to bring personalization for very first time in the GMAT space. So what happens at GMAT Wiz is if you take the GMAT Wiz course, you will work with a personalized study plan. You will not get a general study plan which is given to every student in the same way. You'll have a very specific study plan which will tell you exactly the tasks that you need to complete which is dependent on your timelines which is dependent on your strengths and not just generalized advice and the best part about this study plan is it's a dynamic study plan what i mean by that is that you will get real time improvement modules so your course content is not going to be static it will actually change based on your performance in real time so if you are really doing well in some topics you might as well go through them faster on the other hand if you are running slow with some topics or you are not doing very well the platform is capable enough to even identify what kind of mistakes you are making because when we create questions as an expert we target at every option that you choose that why would a student be ending up with this particular choice so the system is equipped enough to shift through that data to look at thousands of parameters and understand what your improvement areas are and on the fly it creates short improvement modules for you including videos including additional questions which can help you improve on those weak areas of yours and then the uh, icing on the cake is that you also get a dedicated mentor with whom you can connect and actually every 10 to 15 days you can have a call with your mentor understand from them what else do you need to do to improve your score so we are not doing personalization only through ai and technology we are they doing a hybrid or a blended learning model for both ai with ai as well as a human being who understand gmat inside out and these mentors have played amazing roles in gmat uh, with student success and you can go on gmat club read the reviews of gmat with students and you will see every single student mentioning about the amazing mentors that they have okay so that's a quick intro about us but now let's focus on what should your approach be to get to a 700 plus on gmat focus edition so 700 plus is like 705 minimum and 705 is the score which gets you to a 99th percentile so if you're looking at that kind of a score what should your approach be now please understand that gmat is a test which is very different from any other test out there the reason why i say so is that in any other test accuracy translates directly to your score so if you have a high accuracy you have a high score in gmat that's not how it works gmat works on an adaptive algorithm what that means is that uh, it's not just the accuracy that they're looking at they're also looking at what questions or which questions are you getting right what is the average difficulty level of the questions that you are getting right so if you are making a lot of mistakes on hard questions you will probably not get a high score it is very important that you get the hard questions correct as well that's something which is very critical for gmat so in order to get a high score on gmat you need to ensure that you make the algorithm serve you hard questions now how do you do that you do that by getting a high accuracy on easy and medium questions and that's why we say that it's very important for you to get the first four five questions right as much as possible so that the algorithm can start giving you hard questions as you get to the middle of the test somewhere okay and again i know many of you would want to know how the gmat scoring algorithm and all of that works so that is something which we will be covering in the next session because in episode 3 we are going to talk about the mock strategy how should you take mocks how to should you pace yourself during the mocks what should your timing strategy for the gmat be and what is the uh, right way to analyze the mocks so it's going to be a very interesting session again on focused on that particular part so you might have to hold on for two more weeks to kind of uh, get like get information about that but understand it this way that in the beginning you are going to mostly be uh, served easy and medium questions if you get them right you get to a level where gmat gives you hard questions so first thing is to get hard questions solved by the gmat for that you have to do well in the first four five questions but that that's just the battle half won if you want to get to the next level basically if you really want to get to a 705 kind of a level you need to get this hard questions right okay and you can only get this hard questions right if you know the right skills and you know how to apply them because one of the biggest mistakes which a lot of people do is they will focus on learning shortcuts or tricks to solve questions they learn 10000 shortcuts or 10000 different tricks to short, solve questions but shortcuts and tricks only work on easy and medium questions they do not work on hard questions at all shortcuts will not help you getting the hard in, in getting the hard questions right so if you are learning shortcuts you will not be able to get a 705 kind of a score because you will not be able to get the hard questions right 
okay now solomon friday has a question does this apply for gre i'm not sure uh, like were you asking about the uh, gre product of gmatwise because that's why when i saw the question uh, pro if you are saying that then yes uh, what we provide for gmat is something we provide for gre as well and works in the same way but if you're talking about the adaptive algorithm GRE, the adaptability is separate, different uh, from GMAT. In GMAT, it's question level adaptive. GRE, it's not question level, level adaptive. It's still adaptive, but it, it, it's a section level adaptive test. Okay, I do another see another question. GMAT focus versus GMAT classic. Did the language of the quantitative word problems change at all? Should we uh, use test blank questions from the old prep to the focus edition? So again, I don't see the language changing in quant a lot, basically, especially the word problems part of it. So you can still use the old questions. In fact, if you go through the OG 2023 and compare it with OG 2022, there is not even a single new question which is there in OG 2023. So GMAT is still using the same type of questions for quant. So you don't have to worry about that. So you can pretty much use the previous questions as well. Okay, I hope that answers your question, uh, KTM. Okay, so so as I said, in order to get the high score on GMAT, you need to get the hard questions right. Now, the biggest mistake a lot of people do is when they have to improve their score. And let me ask you guys first. In order to improve your score today, what is that you're doing? I know all of you are here to understand what is the best way to improve your score. And I'm going to tell you that. But I want to hear from you. What is that you're doing today in order to improve your score? Let's say you're stuck at a certain score. I, I saw Utsav, I guess, right? Utsav asked this question. Yes, Utsav, you mentioned you're stuck at a score for three months now, which is 585. What is that you're doing to improve your score from there? And, and this is a question to all of you who have been preparing. What is that you are doing to improve your score? Or what is your strategy to improve your score? Let me hear it from you also. Utsav says practice. I do practice. Okay. What about others? Okay. So let's let's proceed because again, I, I in the interest of time, I'll continue moving forward. But as Utsav says, practice. So practice is one of the very, very common things which many, many people do. And that's probably the first thing which I also wanted to talk about. Yeah, growth has said practice, practice, practice. That's a, that's something which a lot of people think practice makes a man perfect. Practicing questions is one of the key things many people do. Many people focus on taking more and more marks. They just think, okay, if I take more marks, I'll be probably getting better. And some people also work on conceptual building. And, and, and that's what uh, Data Saucer says. They create out basics when mistakes come up, practice and improving speed. So most of the people are doing these things to improve their scores. But what they don't realize is that if you don't identify the right root cause, you'll be actually beating around the bush and not getting to the target score. And practicing alone is not the right thing to do. Why am I saying so? Think of it this way that if you are not using the right method to solve the question, if you don't know the right method to solve a question, the more you practice, you get only you only get better at using the wrong method. But your method is still wrong. You're getting what I'm trying to say. So you're putting in effort, but you're not getting the outcome because you're putting in effort on something which is probably wrong in the first place. So you have to step back and look at what is exactly happening. What Why is that you're making that mistake? And is practicing the right solution to do that? basically and it's, it's just looking at timing is the only thing you should look at that as well you need to understand how to actually uh, identify the root causes first understand the root causes and then accordingly you need to create an action plan so it's important to do both of these things what most people do is they just create an action plan saying okay you know what i have 20 days before my test i study two hours a day and my action plan is okay for the first uh, 10 days i'm just gonna what uh, do about 20 questions a uh, day 10 questions of quant which is probably my the weakest area five questions of di and five questions of verbal something like that so their action plan is all about practicing and the reason why it happens like this is because you are only focusing on creating an action plan you're not focusing on doing the right root cause analysis so let's give attention to how to do the right root cause analysis what is what are the root causes that you are actually that that are actually leading to the problem now to most people, when I say what is the main reason why you're not getting the questions correct, the most common response that I hear from most of them is that, Piyush, you know what? In my regular day-to-day -day practice, I can get the questions right. But when I take set a set for a, sit for a mock test or set a timer in front of me, I start getting questions wrong. So I feel the only issue that I face is timing. And that's a very, very, very the wrong problem statement what many people do is they try to treat symptoms they try to treat symptoms instead of treating the problems instead of treating the weak area, uh, the main problems 
let's take an example let's say you go to a doctor okay you you are having typhoid okay you go to a doctor you tell them that okay i have high grade fever i am i'm feeling nausea and all of that doctor will first diagnose your problem as typhoid he might give you some uh small medicines to take care of fever and nausea and all of that but if he keeps on giving you medicines only for fever let's say paracetamol and all it is not gonna help you recover from typhoid ever the doctor has to treat your problem which is typhoid so he has to give you antibiotics or whatever is required to get to get, take care of your typhoid but if he doesn't do that he just focuses on the symptoms like you are doing right now that you're focusing on the timing by putting yourself under more time pressure you might not as well be solving the problem might not might as well aggravate the problem so it's actually very very critical for you to understand how to do the root cause analysis right now obviously as a student sometimes you're not equipped enough you don't have enough experience to do that and that's where the role of a mentor or an expert comes into picture and gmat as mentors help students in identifying that really well and in case you need my help to understand why you're struggling feel free to schedule a call on my calendar the link is in the description and i've also shared it in the chat but yeah it's very very important because when we look at root cause analysis doing root cause analysis we have to look at multiple factors we have to look at factors like what are the material that you have used resources that you have used because every resource has a different way of let's say uh, teaching you how to solve questions people come across different ways people get confused sometimes they use different methods or wrong methods also we also look at how much time you are taking we also look at the scores that you are getting we also diagnose by asking certain questions to understand what is the methodology or the main pain point so there's a lot of uh, analysis that has to be done to exactly identify the root cause but i'll give you some idea today what kind of root cause analysis you can do and understand where your problems are and how to tackle those problems as well okay so federico has a question he says hi there started with a quant 72 on quant 81 on verbal actually I improved to 75 in 10 days any hint on how to get into the 80s yeah Patrick, i'm gonna cover that as well uh, especially for quant so that is gonna be covered but i have to you might have to wait for another 20 30 minutes for that but um, i have got that covered don't worry about that okay so what are the problem areas so one problem area is concept specific issues it's possible that you are doing general practice but your main problem is with uh, is related to specific concepts just okay but that is a very small problem and it's very easy for many people to identify the most difficult problem to identify is uh module specific issues like it's possible that you are having issues with entire modules you're having issues with the entire uh, critical reasoning portion or the entire reading comprehension portion or the entire word problems bit now whenever you have issues with the entire module a module is a collection of multiple concepts think of it this way which are related to each other so in in uh, as per me the definition of module that i'm using cr rc number properties word problems algebra integrated reasoning these would be modules or you can break down integrated reasoning also into tpa msr whatever you want to okay so basically a module specific issue denotes that your problem is not with conceptual level the problem is not with con at conceptual level the problem is how you understand those concepts the problem is how you approach the problems like the methodology that you use is something which is flawed and if your methodology is flawed you will never be able to actually get to the right score no matter how much practice you do you might improve a little but you will not see significant improvement beyond that and please understand that gmat focus edition score percentiles might make you feel that uh jump from let's say a 70 again i'm just taking an example of federico but don't uh, it's not personal don't mind it at all uh jump from 70 to 75 70 to 75 is much more easier to get because 70 is the bare minimum score you can get but a jump the same five point jump from 75 to 80 probably might take two times or three times the effort and probably 80 to 85 might take even more effort because if you look at the percentiles they're very skewed overall uh, uh the one one single point jump to as you move upwards of 80 becomes very very difficult to get so it's very important for you to actually learn why you're having this module specific issues and it is mostly to do with the process that you're using to solve if your process is wrong you'll not be able to improve them then there could be issues just with certain difficulty types of questions you might only be able like having issues with the hardest difficulty questions so you have to look at that as well you have to do that kind of analysis you have to also look at the question types that you're getting wrong sometimes people have a lot of issues with data sufficiency questions or let's say msr questions but in other question types they don't have that much of an issue so you have to look at question types as well like are you getting a specific question type wrong it could be poor timing now poor timing like most people think that is the only issue but poor timing generally relates is actually one of 
these factors is because of one of these factors and there is one more reason why poor timing can happen and i'll take talk about that and there could be some other reasons as well and as i said i cannot cover everything there are a lot of different use cases that we see every single day and over the last 10 years i have spoken to more than 10000 students so if you want to connect with me and understand how gmat bis can help you improve your score feel free to reach out i'll be happy to do your root cause analysis and help you understand how our team can help you with that but let's go into the first problem how do you improve on concept specific things now concept specific things happen when let's say you're having problem with a specific area let's say within number properties you're having issues with prime numbers or just divisibility or in critical reasoning you're only having issues with bold face type of questions so in such cases your first step should be that you focus on reviewing the topic and covering the concept gaps once again it's possible that you have not understood the concepts in depth or even if you have understood the concepts you have not understood the concepts in a logical way you have just tried to memorize the rules or the formulas and just look at it okay this is how it works but try to logically reason with yourself why these concepts are working in this particular way because it's possible that if there is a slight change in the concept like or the construction gives you a slight trick you are not able to adjust to that and if you are not able to adjust to that you end up making mistakes because of that so that is probably one problem area for you the first step is that that's that's why i said the first step is to review the concept the second step is to do 5 to 10 questions not do many questions just do 5 to 10 questions and focus on the process of solving and in this cases i generally recommend that you do small set of questions maybe a set of two or three questions is what you do then look at the process also that okay how am i supposed to apply the concept and when you are doing this it's important that you are you do try to do different variations in which the concept can be tested also okay because you need to understand that okay in this type of questions uh this is how the gmat is trying to trick you in this type of questions this is how the gmat is trying to trick you so try to differentiate between the different types and see how you can logically take care of those slight tricks and slight deviations not just try to memorize it okay don't think of it this way that okay if this kind of question comes i'll do it like that no don't memorize try to reason with logic why these variations are working in the way they are working that's when you will actually able to will be able to improve the score and then solve 20 to 30 questions in sets of 10 to improve your confidence okay again understand here your focus should not be on timing your focus should not be on timing at all your focus should be on understanding the process and the concept when you are doing questions of 20 30 questions in sets of 10 each you can try this that okay in set 1 you can uh, do a untimed test see what your timing is basically in the, over here let's say it's x minutes then in set 2 of 10 questions you can put a time of x minus 20 seconds let's say time limit of that so in that way you can try and reduce your timing in the sec third stage but don't do that in the second stage i hope this is clear to all of you any questions till this point feel free to ask me in the meantime i'll take up utsav's question utsav says sir i tried many mocks including gmat uh, pw and egmat but in all my scores are different how do we find where we stand so again if you're doing a, a proper mock which is like having the right uh, scoring and all then your score should not be very different unless you are not very equipped to kind of uh, uh, get consistent scores because sometimes you use different methods on different days so the scores don't get consistent so again feel free to reach out generally the official mocks are the golden standard for knowing what is the right score that you get okay but yeah that's that's what i would say sure federico look forward to speaking to you feel free to reach out definitely so this is how you do the work on the concept specific improvement uh, so i don't see any uh, comments in the chat so i feel all of you are clear about it but if you have any questions feel free to ask more okay now the second area is how to work on the module specific issues so let's say you are having module specific issues then how do you get to work on it that's the second thing and it's very very important for you to understand how to work on that as well so to help you understand that i'll take a particular use case to explain that scenario to you okay so let's uh, like because that this is a real use case that we worked with uh, long back and this is one of Uh, the root cases where this module analysis was really really important so what we did with the student was like the student was uh, weak in verbal so when he took the gmat again he took the gmat classic and many of you who would have taken the gmat would have still taken the old version because it was available till 31st jan uh, last year uh, this year itself actually so this student took the gmat classic and we looked at his scores and we saw that his major problem areas were critical reasoning and rc and again i have taken this case study because again this is uh, this is related to the areas which are there in gmat focus also so his problem was with both these areas so we said okay let's uh, identify the issues with this and uh, 
this generally a problem when when your score is around 45 50 percentile this means generally your conceptual knowledge is decent enough uh, overall uh, but it's mostly the approach of solving the questions that is going wrong so this guy akshat actually improved his scores by 80 point in just 24 days so in, I, I, I cannot uh, share his entire case with you today obviously uh, but i'm sharing the link of his uh, interview in case you want to watch it out you can do that uh, it, at your time later i have the link in the chat here basically but how he improved his ernrc so this is the module wise improvement that you can do i'm just giving you an advice around it so first thing you need to do is understand the methods better so improve your understanding of the methodology so for example in critical reasoning what we saw was that akshat was not using framework driven pre-thinking approach properly so he was trying to pre-think but he was not using the framework driven pre-thinking approach which is the improved version of pre-thinking which allows you to compartmentalize question types into different frameworks and has a clear-cut way of thinking around those uh, frameworks and understanding the assumptions that are there okay we have conducted a lot of webinars around that uh, in case you want to check out the webinars uh, you can always search on uh, youtube framework driven pre-thinking by gmatwes and you will definitely get to see some of those videos so then we recommended that after using this learning this methodology and improving your method understanding of this review the solutions in depth even for the correct questions so what we started telling him what we recommended him is that when you're solving questions in your notepad you note down why you eliminated each of the choices also and at a broad level when you're looking at the answer don't just look at the options first look at the uh, solution to see how you should have thought about the entire argument how should you, you you have read the passage how should you have gone about step one step two try to see all of that even for the correct questions and try to match your understanding with the context in the solution to make sure that if there's any deviation that is there between your approach and the solution you're able to understand that okay this is where i went wrong this is where i did not think about the understanding in the best possible way so in order to improve your score in a module you need to improve your method of solving the question and to improve your method your step one is supposed to be the method learning part step two is to make sure for every question that you solve you check the solution and validate with the solution that okay this is how i should have gone about solving it and then obviously while you're doing that you should also look at the patterns in the incorrect choices to see whether you are able to identify the right pattern or not and this is something which we provide in gmat with, with every solution we tell that okay this is because of distortion out of scope and we define what is distortion out of scope in the video lessons that are there so the student was able to work on these areas and improve his score the other issue is was the poor timing that he was having under anxiety he was taking too much time in the beginning of the test and we helped him understand the root causes behind that we suggested him to meditate and do more things around that and and finally he was able to improve his score to actually 80 points to gmat 730 which is equivalent to about a 695 on the gmat focus edition and he was able to improve in both critical reasoning and reading comprehension just within 24 days basically okay and this is this is someone who is right now studying in NCR, an uh, NCR uh, student right now. So he was able to improve his score by working on the module analysis. So you need to learn the right methods to solve questions. And I'm just showing the right methods for all the different areas in GMAT on your screen right now. So you see, these are the methods that you need to use. Let me go full screen. That way you'll be able to see it better. So these are the different methods that we recommend students to use for the different areas. And make sure you're using these methods. If you're not using these methods, you should start using these methods. So how to work on approach related improvement? Just summarizing that. Step one, understand them method step two solve 15 questions one at a time making sure that you are looking at the explanation to divide uh, and identify any deviations from the methodology at all overall and improve on that particular part now the third reason why your score could be stuck at a particular level is poor timing now poor timing as i said in itself is generally not the main reason it generally happens because of one of these two things. Either you have conceptual gaps, you are stuck in specific concepts, or it is because of process gaps. If it is because of process gaps, you will have poor timing across an entire module. You will have poor timing in entire of RC or CR or number properties or so and so forth. If it is because of conceptual issues, it will only happen with specific type of questions. Let's say prime numbers. It could be because of prop problem permutation and combination in just one topic or just bold phase or whatever. So the idea is you need to see where you are getting your timing wrong is it 
in a entire module if it is in an entire module you need to work on a process of solving questions if it is in a specific concept only or some specific concepts then it is conceptual issue so go back to the solution that i recommended for the concept part of it the third reason why your prior timing could be too poor is because you are think, thinking about timing too soon i see people who come to me and say you should know what i am actually not able to solve questions under 2 minutes and and these people are just in their first week of learning they try to put a pressure on their mind that from what they want they should be able to get a question right in 2 minutes that's the wrong thought process guys in the initial days no one can do that most people can't do that i, I should not say no one if you are brilliant you might be able to do it but most people do, will not be able to do it i scored a 740 on gmat classic which is 705 approximately on gmat focus and i was taking about 3 minutes 3 and a half minutes per question in many questions especially in verbal which was my weaker area in the beginning but i was able to get to a better score within a two and a half months of prep time it is not something which cannot be done it's something which will be happen which will happen but it will take time because please understand when you learn anything new you take some time to get used to a certain method like when you learned how to drive a car you had to think about so many different things all the mirrors in the car the steering wheel the car in the front the car on the side the the, the vehicles on the side the accelerator the brake the clutch all of that in gearbox at the same time it was difficult you took extra time to learn that process but once you practice driving now probably you can drive uh, even while thinking about something else or talking to someone in the car or uh, who knows what so you can do that because of your subconscious mind kicking in and that's something which happens with gmat as well so make sure that you're not thinking about timing too soon if you time think about timing too soon you will end up with poor timing issues as well okay so make sure that you are taking care of that now as i said this is something which i have already covered let's take talk about another issue question specific timing issues so this happens when you are having trouble with specific type of questions so this is a very common thing with data sufficiency questions and there is no better way to actually solve a question to understand how to solve this problem so you have the question on your screen i'm going to give you a couple of minutes to solve this question and i'm going to be on mute for the next 2 minutes and then we will solve this question together to understand how can you improve your type your accuracy on concept specific issue at uh, question specific issues okay so let's see what the question tells us uh at a certain clothing store and again whenever you solve this question please feel free to uh, answer, like type down your answers in the comments here would love to see what is the answer that you have gotten let's see at a certain clothing store customers who buy two shirts pay the regular price for the first shirt and a discounted price for the second shirt okay so they are talking about two shirts basically okay so let's say the regular price is r1 and r2 the cost price is let's say c1 and c2 and the discounted price is let's say d1 and d2 okay whatever so uh, when our customer buys two shirts they take the first shirt at the regular price and they uh, take the second shirt at the discounted price that's what they're telling me okay i don't know whether the price of the two shirts are same or not the store makes the same profit from a sale of two shirts okay sale of two shirts the profit from sale of two shirts is basically same as the profit from sale of one shirt at regular price that's what the equation is a question is telling me okay for a customer who buy two shirts what is the discounted price of the second shirt so they are asking me what is the value of d2 now many people when they do solve data sufficiency questions they do not do proper analysis of the information in question stem they just read information just the way i did they just look at the information write down important things and then they directly move to statement 1 how many of you do that you can just say a yes or no uh if in the chat I, i don't expect you to write a lot because i i hardly see responses in the chat but guys i would love to see yes is no uh, because again this is very important for you to understand and uh, learn and if you understand this well you learn this well this is going to eventually help you in improving your score only okay so if you directly move to statement 1 after reading the question stem say a yes if you don't do that then say a no because that's a very common mistake that most people do and you should not be doing that at all you should always make sure that you draw as many inferences as possible from the question stem first because if you do that then you will be able to solve the question much faster and much more efficiently as well because the biggest issue with data sufficiency is that gmat will never 
in most cases, especially in hard questions, they won't tell you exactly what you need to find. They might give you something else, but in reality, they might they want you to find something else altogether. So it's very important to simplify the questions then and draw as many inferences as possible. And then probably you'll not even need to spend that much time on the uh, individual sentences or statements. Okay, so let's try to do that. So profit from sale of one for two shirts is same as the profit of sale uh, profit from sale of one shirt at regular price. Okay, so what is my profit from sale of first shirt? That is R1 minus C1. What is my profit from sale of second shirt? Which is R2, sorry, D2 minus C2. It's not R2 minus C2. Let me just uh, remove this part a bit. Okay, so basically, uh, the second shirt is sold at the discounted price. That is what, what is given to me. So D2 minus C2 is the profit from the second shirt. So this is same as the profit that I make from selling just one shirt at the regular price. So basically, this gets cancelled out. So what I know is D2 minus C2 is 0 or in other words, C2 is equal to D2. So you can try to do this mathematically that the way I have shown it over here on the screen or you can reason logically also that if the shop or store is not is making same profit in on sale of two shirts as it is making on the sale of one shirt at regular price that means it is not making any profit on the sale of the second shirt right if it is making the same profit on sale of two shirts vis-a-vis -vis the sale of one shirt that simply means that they are not making any profit from the sale of the second shirt what that means is that the second shirt is being sold at the cost price which is what we have gotten to that what the second shirt is being sold at the cost price and we know that the second shirt is being sold at the discounted price right so d2 is equal to c2 so in a way the question is asking us d2 but even if you know the price of the second shirt which is c2 we will be able to find the answer still and if you are able to analyze it to this level the question will be a cakewalk for you let's look at statement one the regular price of each of the two shirts that the customer buys at the regular store is dollar 16. so it tells me the regular price but does it tell me the discount does it tell me the cost price no it doesn't give me any information about the cost price or the discounted price so i cannot answer the question using statement one at all okay now let's look at statement two the cost of to the closing store of each of the two shirts is dollar 12 so it's saying that c1 is equal to c2 which is dollar 12 and this is what i need right if i know the value of c2 i know that is the value of d2 and that's good enough for me to answer the question so statement 2 is sufficient to answer this question that means the right answer is option b and see how easy it is if you draw inferences from the question step so what i wanted to communicate was that whenever you have a question specific issue you're mostly going wrong with the way the uh, or the approach that you're using to solve the question if you improve your approach your score will also improve okay so do proper pre-analysis and draw inferences in in case of uh, data sufficiency questions it's very very important it helps you save time it helps you improve your efficiency also now let's look at the next thing which is how should you maintain an error log so when you have to obviously to do root cause analysis you would need an error log as well so to maintain an error log i recommend to make sure that you note down all this information obviously the question reference the section whether it is from quant verbal or data insights where what is the module like algebra number properties critical reasoning what is the topic that the question is from the subtopic of the question whether it is an easy question hard question or medium question how many time how much time you are taking correct or incorrect then try to identify the main error why you're getting the question wrong okay so for example over here i have written whether it is a concept related issue or a process related issue so it's a process related issue and why so my conceptual knowledge was fine when I was solving this question. I know how to find the nth term of a series. It's just that when it was coming to solving the question, I instead of using my right method, I started plugging numbers in this case. So is the revision required in this question or not? Take a column around that as well so that you know later on whether you should revise the question or not. And you should also put some remarks if possible to help you Self, yourself understand why you made a particular error then you can use this error log in a very good way you can create pivot tables out of this to kind of see what your scores are in algebra across a particular difficulty level or which topics are you getting the questions wrong so this error log template will be really really helpful for you to identify so if you want you can take a screenshot of this you can try and create an error log template of your own using this as well uh, basically in excel in microsoft excel now, we've talked a lot about the problem. Let's now focus on the solution. How to create an action plan out of all this and improve your GMAT score. 
Okay. Now, obviously, uh, we covered a lot about the action plan. As I said, this is a part of a three-week webinar, uh, three-part webinar series where we talk about uh, learning phase, which we have already done in episode one. The fine-tuning phase is the one that you are seeing in yellow. So we recommend that you should, if you're if you're planning to do GMAT in 90 days and you are doing about 20 hours a week on GMAT from ninth week onwards, half of the ninth week till half first half of the 12th week, uh, you have to give around 60 hours to your fine tuning. And out of the 60 hours, about 40 hours go on your week areas and 20 hours go on overall practice. So let's go in depth on this overall. So in the fine tuning phase, you should give about 60 to 70% of your time solely on working on your weak areas okay so identify your weak areas as i said using root cause analysis and work on them and then divide the rest of the time on general practice and revision taking sectional tests and like things like that okay so divide the rest of the time on that accordingly now let's focus on how to identify work on your weak areas so if you want to improve your verbal score first try and identify keep a, keep a benchmark of 70 percentile if your score is more than 70 percentile in a particular area let's say your score is at 80 percentile in cr and 50 percentile in rc that means cr is strong section rc is your weak section if both of them are below 70 let's say cr is also 60 percent then it is also a weak area for you okay so you have to identify whether a topic a module belongs in a weak area or a strong area the reason why this is important is because you have to understand uh, what kind of work you need to do in that particular topic that particular area so let's say if you're working on a weak area then you might have to also work on certain concepts first because it's possible that you might also have concept specific issues so in a weak area like weak area is as i said less than 70 percentile so uh look at take a sectional test of 20 to 30 questions and see and filter out topics within within that particular module where your score is less than 60 percent if your score is less than 60 percent you need to do concept building also you need to revise the concepts also first and then only you could move to focus learning application of concepts after you cover these concept caps okay so that's something which is important so what i'm recommending is that for the weak area you need to first identify where you need to improve your conceptual knowledge do that and then you need to work on the approach which is going to be same as what you do on the strong area so the only additional step you need to do for a weak area is identify in which topics your score is less than 60 percent and work on those topics conceptually first okay so do that overall now wh what should your right approach be so again cr the right approach is to analyze the stem then do pre-thinking then do answer choice elimination and in rc again there's a three-step process that we follow so first learn this approach as i've told you earlier also and this is something which you can learn through concept booster of gmat -Viz. so in gmat -Viz, we have this amazing idea of a concept booster that we have created where you solve only one question at a time first and when you solve this question you will get to see a detailed step-by-step -step solution which shows you how you should have gotten about thinking about the entire method okay it is a very methodical way of solving the question that we show so you compare your approach with this particular approach you are able to automatically identify the gaps in your application so after question one you see solution one you learn from the solution you apply that on question two you see solution two you learn more from solution two you apply that on question three and so on so by the time you are done with the concept booster you will be able to learn the right method and not just that you will be able to cover all the different ways because every question in the concept booster covers a different aspect or a different variation in which gmat tests you on that particular topic so you will get to know in how many ways i can be tested and you will be able to perfect your approach for all different varieties and you will be able to see these concept boosters in every topic we call it concept boosters or boosters so the keyword you need to look at is a booster so you'll be able to see these boosters in every set of topics in gmat -Viz. okay so learn the method through the boosters then try to solve 30 40 questions using the approach when you are doing this you can focus on reducing time over here but make sure that you are reviewing the solutions at every stage okay make sure you do that guys so antonio section order which section order we should take on the exam so again antonio that's a question which i'm going to discuss in episode three because that has to do with mocks and the exam strategy so that is going to be in uh, episode three but if i have time at the end of the session i'll probably take that up as well okay now improving quant and di uh, score again federico this is probably for you i see you have you mentioning that you are spending 20 hours on the week mostly on quant is it too concentrated see in your case uh, 
I would say it's slightly more concentrated than it should be. I would recommend again. I have to look at the other uh, scores as well and what you have done till now. But broadly, I would recommend about 60% to 70% effort on quant, not that much. So to improve your quant and DI score, first identify your areas of improvement. So start with taking a 30 question quiz, maybe on all the areas, number properties, word problems, algebra. Here you can do both PS and DS. That way you will get data for both the question types because again, DS questions are related to quant. And for IR, you can do 30 question quiz now after doing this 30 question quiz try to see whether you have conceptual gaps or application gaps again okay so if your score is less than 60 percent in a particular topic then it is related to conceptual gaps if it is more than 60 percent then it is application gaps so but obviously less than 85 percent uh so less if your score is less than 60 percent learn the concepts and formulas first on that particular topic and then learn to uh solve questions how to solve questions and do, do 15 to 20 questions if it is application related don't no need to learn concepts just learn how to solve questions methodically and practice 10 to 15 questions okay so this is how you need to tackle quant and verbal individually and di individually to improve your score so now you have an action plan you know how to do root cause analysis you're well equipped to improve your score and that's something which we have done with so many different students in the past in case you want to watch out our reviews you can go to gmat club check out a lot of success stories that we have done and i'll share some of the other amazing amazing success stories where people have been stuck on a certain score for more than six seven months and were able to improve their score in one shot after that balaji is one such case this guy was actually stuck at a score of 700 he scored 700 710 710 in three attempts after giving about eight months of preparation using one of the most popular uh, gmat pre test providers service and then he came to gmat ways and within two months he was able to improve his score to a 760 his verbal score saw a jump from almost 10 points 35 to 44 he improved his verbal score by so much in just one attempt okay so there are many many people we have helped improve their scores from in fact gmat ways has delivered the highest score improvement in the industry today in overall so feel free to reach out to us you have the contact details on the screen uh but yeah i'll take up antonio's question in which section order should you take the test so there are two different ways to look at it antonio some people say start with your strongest section first some people say start with your weakest section first so if you are someone who generally has like you are very very strong in your strong section like in quant for example if some some people are very very strong they can probably wake up from their sleep and still get a good score in quant if you're that kind of a person starting with your weaker section probably makes more sense because in that case you can maximize your attention span in the weaker section in the initial phase of the test you'll have more attention more energy so you can probably maximize on your weakness by starting with it on the other hand if you're someone who takes time to get let's say into the zone like you take time to warm up and all of that then you can start with the stronger section because then you can probably even in the stronger section with slightly less attention you are able to do better that's the idea so you need to maximize your attention span okay i generally prefer starting with the vk section first that's the best thing that i feel and that is something which works with many many people so that is one way i'll go but again i'll cover this in depth in episode three happy to hear federico that you were able to find the session helpful and if others uh, have found the session helpful and i hope that uh, you have found the session helpful so feel free to uh, reach out to us feel free to share this video with your friends and like and subscribe to this video uh, more than happy to help you guys out like we have helped so many students to improve their gmat scores and uh, you can always connect with us i've shared the details on the, the screen over here so feel free to reach out to us and discuss more in depth and i wish you all, wish you all the best for your gmat i hope you are learning a lot from this sessions so do join us for the episode three which is going to happen in exactly two weeks uh, from now so most likely on first of may is when we are going to have the final session uh, the final episode three for this study plan session 90 days to the 99th percentile and let's get you there